In this video, we're gonna walk all the way through one of our signature environmental portrait edits, and I'm gonna show you a technique that we refer to as twice baking, to go from this raw image all the way to this final shot that you see here. Welcome, if you're new here, first, my name is Pai, nice to meet you. This is your place for no-nonsense photography education, a little bit of nonsense. But with that, we're gonna go ahead and dive straight into this. Now, the process of twice baking is essentially this. We're gonna begin with this raw file that you see here. We're gonna apply a look. That's step one, apply a look. This can be using any of your own looks. You can use your own presets. You can do this manually, whatever you'd like. Now, we're gonna use visual flow presets, but don't worry. I'm gonna show you all the settings to get to that look if you wanna recreate the same image. Step two is then we're gonna jump over to Luminar 4. We're gonna replace the sky using Luminar's AI sky replacement tools. The reason we're using Luminar is because it makes it incredibly fast. We spend seconds on an image instead of minutes doing it in Photoshop. But if you don't have it and you don't wanna get it, by all means, just use Photoshop. Then we're gonna come back to Lightroom and we're gonna apply another set of develop settings. This is the twice baking part of it. So step three, we twice bake the image back in Lightroom. This is a great place to go ahead and pause the video, go ahead and download the exercise file, and we're about to jump in. So first, I'm gonna just set up a filter so all we see is just this one image. Let's go ahead and start by jumping in the develop module by pressing D. I'm gonna press R to bring up my cropping tool, and you can do this a couple different ways. Honestly, with a straight horizon like this, the easiest way to correct it is just to go down a transform and click level. It'll automatically level the horizon. The other thing I wanna do is add profile correction. So I have a little preset in the tools set up here, but all it's doing is just enabling profile correction right here with chromatic aberration. So let's start there so at least we have the same crop and the same everything else. Everything else on this image is completely reset out as you can see. From here, I'm gonna press control apostrophe or command apostrophe to create a virtual copy. The only reason is just having something to compare with, okay? So we have the original and now we're gonna to go to this image. Now this is where you're gonna to go to step one, dial in your first look. To save time, what I'm gonna do is use Visual Flow Pastel for the overall look. This is gonna give us a bright and airy look. Don't worry, I'm gonna show you the color settings so you guys can dial this in for yourselves if you don't wanna jump into the Visual Flow system, okay? The Visual Flow system adapts all these looks over to different lighting conditions. So giving you this look is no problem. I want you guys to have it so there's no additional purchase necessary. So we're gonna go through all the settings as to what's happening, but first, Let's just get our exposure and everything right. I'm thinking about skin tones first. So I'm gonna go ahead and brighten this up a little bit more. I'm gonna go ahead and just bring the tint down a little bit and minus out a little bit of the temperature right about here. We get this kind of bright and airy pastel vibe. Now what's happening here? Okay, well obviously we're pulling highlights down, whites down. It's not enough to preserve any of the sky detail here. So our sky is completely gone. Okay, we're lifting shadows, lifting blacks, adding a little bit of contrast. Now, scrolling down, you can see that the tone curve is heavily modified. So this is an S-curve that's adding brightness and contrast to the highlights and pulling down mid-tones and shadows. Okay, so you can see what that tone curve is doing if I turn this on and off. That's, what, that's where we're getting all of the contrast back in the image from flattening it out up here. As I keep going down, you'll see the HSL. This is where a lot of the magic is happening because we're shifting all of these tones over to a more pastel kind of look where we get soft and airy tones. Blues become a little more teal and oranges kind of take on a more uh, sort of pinkish hue to them. Everything gets a more pastel vibe to it, okay? So again, you can pause the video, dial this in for yourself. You'll see a big part of this is reducing saturation across the board, especially in the greens and the blues. We're also tweaking a little bit the luminance values and then we get down to split toning. In split toning, we're adding a little bit of color, a little bit of warmth into the highlights and a little bit of blues into the shadows. We don't have anything in the detail going on. We get down here to calibration and we're doing again another shift of tones to get the colors into a more kind of pastel color space, if that makes sense. Okay, so again, feel free to save this out if you'd like, but that's how we get to this first look. Now from here, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna go to step two. This is where we're gonna jump into Luminar. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click. We're gonna go edit in, and we're gonna go Luminar 4. This will open up Luminar as a plugin. We're gonna click okay. So again, if you don't wanna jump into Luminar, by all means, just use Photoshop. If you have Photoshop to, I assume you do because you have Lightroom. So use Photoshop to replace the sky. The difference here that we're talking about is a matter of minutes 
and replacing this guy versus seconds, okay? Luminar is gonna be seconds. If you're doing this to say just one image here and there, then not a big deal. But if you're gonna be doing this for a lot of images, even a few images a week, you're gonna save a dramatic amount of time with this tool by itself. All you're gonna do, we have Luminar loaded up, go to the creative palette, go to AI sky replacement, and you're literally gonna just choose the sky that you want. Okay, so I'm gonna go to dramatic sky. Actually, let's go to sunsets and let's see what the sunsets are. So all we gotta do is pick the right sunset and it's automatically gonna blend things for us. This is what's beautiful and I love this sunset right here. So what would take minutes in Photoshop is literally just a click here. Now we can choose how to blend it, right? So when it comes to blending, here's what I like to do. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the advanced settings. First, I like to add atmosphere case, and I usually add quite a bit of this. In fact, this tool is because of me. I like to say that because I actually had the developers sitting with me and I said, you know, it'd be really nice if we could blend opacity of these sky layers. And they were like, cool, we'll add that in as atmosphere case. I thought that was awesome. Now, I want the light to look as if it came from the scene. So notice how the sunlight's coming from the left here, but the rocks are being lit from the right on this originating scene, right? So what I'm gonna do is flip the sky. Now it flips the sky and it looks like the sunlight is all coming from one place. Perfect, that's what we want. I'm gonna go ahead and brighten the exposure of the sky just a little bit more. So again, it kind of has that same bright and airy look and feel as the overall image. Now look at how crazy this is. If I turn this on and off, a matter of seconds and we've already got a sky in there. We can do a little bit more here. Usually I like to tone down the relight a little bit. I like to kind of add a little bit of horizon blending just to kind of get it a little more smooth along the horizon line. You can change the horizon position, but honestly, it looks really great the way it is. The last thing I like to look at is sky defocus. So if the background is not sharp, in this image, you can see how the background, like all the way to the extending of this, um, the, the ocean here, it's all sharp. So I don't need to worry about defocusing the image at all. But if your image is defocused a little bit um, in the background, then you want to add that just to make it a little more convincing. So this is already looking good. I'm gonna might maybe brighten this up just a little bit more. And from here, you're just gonna click apply. Now, while this is saving out, we're gonna go to that third step. So this is that twice baking process where now we're gonna reapply another look over the image, right? So let's go back to Lightroom. So this is that edit that we just did right here. We just got this back in. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna go and apply a completely different look. So look, I'm working on a new pack. It's called Crush and uh, this is, just the color engine that's in development right now. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you that look too, so you can have that look. But I'm gonna go ahead and apply Crush. Again, you can apply whatever preset you want over this the second time. You can do it manually if you like, but essentially what we're gonna do is just twice bake it. I'm gonna press Shift F so we can get back to full screen. Okay, all right, back to full screen. Let's apply Crush. Now all I'm gonna do is take the exposure down a little bit. I'm again looking for skin tones. I, I wanna get this right where I want the skin tone of the image, okay? So right about here is good. All right, so before we do any local adjustments, let's just cover what's happening. So again, it's pulling the highlights down a bit, pulling the whites down, adding a little bit of shadows and blacks. We're adding that same S-curve. Oh, we've got a lot of dehaze going on that's adding a lot of pop back into the image. We're also tweaking vibrance. Now along with that dehaze, what we're doing in Crush is we're trying to maintain skin tones. So we've got a lot of HSL work as well as a lot of camera calibration work being done. And once again, you can pause the video, dial this in if you wanna save it out. We're just working on this look right now and it's gonna be adapted to the lighting conditions later on. So I have no problem just giving you guys kind of the looks and you guys have them. If you guys want them applied to the different lighting conditions, check out Visual Flow because it's awesome. It's just awesome. All right, so with the hue, we're shifting it a little bit more towards the uh, orange side. We're also shifting orange to a little bit more towards the red side, pulling the values a little bit together. Aquas, we're making another shift again, as well as in the blues. So the blues, we're shifting it more towards the purple, the aqua more towards the blues, and this ends up giving us more punchy kind of blue and aqua tones a little bit. You'll notice that we're pulling down a little bit of the saturation, but what's happening is a lot of our dehaze is adding saturation. What we're doing down here is sort of modifying and tweaking to get back to where we're trying to go. We're also doing the same thing on the luminance side, making sure that blues are pulled down so we get this nice vibrant blue tone in the image. We're adding a little bit of split toning, a little bit of shadows. It is adding some sharpening. So what I'm gonna do is, I don't want the image to be twice sharpened. So I'm gonna go ahead and just deselect this. So just double click that so it turns off. We will leave noise reduction because we are applying quite a bit of effects to this. Um, so I'll leave it to where it's at. We do have a little bit of camera calibration work as well. 
Again, adjusting color to get to this place that we want it to go with this crushed poppy look with good skin tone, okay? So from here now, all I'm gonna do is grab a graduate filter. I'm gonna pull this from the right side to the left to kind of make sure that my tones on each side are sort of evened out, right? Then I'm gonna grab one more radial filter and drop it in right over the couple. Now we're gonna pull all the tones into them. So what I'm looking to do is kind of create this nice even toning where everything around them is dramatic and it pulls right into them. I'm gonna add just a little bit more contrast to the image, boost it up a little bit in the exposure. And I'm looking at this and it looks really solid. If you feel like one side is a little more balanced than the other, like this side's a little bit too uh, dark. I'm gonna grab a dodge. And these are just exposure bumps, right? So I'm just gonna grab a dodge, pull it from left to right and pull this one down a little bit so it sort of matches the brightness on this side, okay? So this was where we came back from Luminar, and now this is that final twice-baked look, right? Really fun, but check this out. In just a matter of moments, I mean, I walked you through this process and explained every step of the way, right? And we're still only at, what, 10 minutes in this video? I, I can't see the actual timer, so we're only 10 minutes into this. When I'm doing this just for each image, it's literally just a click of a preset, adjust contrast, choose the one for the right lighting condition, go straight to Luminar, replace the sky, go back, twice bake it. And I'm talking like a minute or two per image to get from this raw file over to this final image here and to have clients that are just blown away by what you're doing. So I want you all to practice this technique. We have a completely free group on Facebook. It's called Visual Flow Presets and Lightroom Education. Join it, show us your work. I'd love to see your befores and after using the twice bake technique. If you guys wanna learn more about Visual Flow Presets, check out vfpresets.com to see all of these different presets and to see how they're adapted to different lighting conditions to make your workflow that much easier. We're also gonna link up all the software we used, including Luminar 4 in the description of the video. Be sure to check that out too. And for more of the best education, you can check out srlounceworkshops.com. Last but not least, I'd love to hear what you guys think. If you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Comment below. I like to read the comments and get ideas for future videos. So let me know what you think. And uh, well, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.